Okay, welcome to this presentation for Linux Fest Northwest 2024. Uh, topic of this presentation is going to be Intro to JQ, Grep for JSON. Dr. Hans, take it away. All right. So uh, thanks a lot. Uh, welcome again to, to continuing uh, Linux Fest Northwest for 2024. Uh, uh, I am a uh, uh, engineering manager for uh, Object Rocket, which is a, a all their own subsidiary of, of Rackspace. Actually, we're not a subsidiary anymore, but, you know, anyway. Uh, so uh, I run a, an engineering team. I am hiring uh, both for the U.S. and for India. And actually, I think we have some contractor positions in Brazil as well. And if you all are looking uh, for something system in related or database related, please let me know. All right. Finding me. You can find me right here in this room an hour ago. So, all right. Uh, also, uh, Seagull is organizing right now for our, our November hybrid conference. Uh, that's uh, based out of Seattle, but don't have to be. I'm not uh, from Seattle, uh, and uh, I've been helping with, with Seagull for years from Phoenix. I've been able to get to Linux Fest Northwest a, a couple of times as well. Um, so we're not, uh, we, we don't depend on people being uh, local, um, but we do depend on volunteers. So if you'd like to help with that, uh, please let us know. Uh, and we are also on site today. We, being other members of Seagull, are on site as well. All right. Let's start off with what is JQ? JQ is command line multi tool for JSON, for JSON documents. It slices, it dices, it spices. It mashes, it bashes, it masses. All right. For those of you that are Gallagher fans. All right. Um, JQ for JSON data. Uh, it is lightweight and light and flexible command line JSON processor. Uh, it can read and parse JSON documents. It can transform them. It can filter them. It can map. We're going to get to a good portion of that. Actually, I think we're going to get to all of that today. Um, so filter. From the command line, you know, those of us have been system ends or just general Linux and Unix users for, for years uh, are familiar with command line filtering tools like grep, right? So I can grep. I can say look for this string in this text document and is looking at it for line per line, so line delineated searches. Uh, so in this example, I'm grepping for nobody with a colon in front, of, in front and behind in a ace line or any line in the Etsy password file. And I brought back the entry for, for nobody that pretty well all of us have on our Linux systems, right? Uh, or something similar might be different based on the distribution. Um, but I'm, I, I was looking for a particular pattern. I was looking for <laughs> colon, the word nobody, and then another colon, all in order. With grep, we can obviously get, for those of us that are familiar with the tool, we can get much, much more complex with that, right? Um, and it, you, But uh, for those of us that are, are familiar with the password file, the colon colon is saying, I'm looking for a field that has nobody in it, right? So the password file is a uh, line delineated, commonly separated uh, database of entries, right? So every entry is a every line is a different entry within our our, our users, and uh, each line is broken up into different chunks with colons. In the example here, we've got the 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 output. You can see the the colon delimitation, and I call it CSV commonly dis delimited be delimited because it doesn't have to be commas. It can be any character you want. Uh, in fact, it could be words instead of characters, uh, and so forth. So that works great for line-based data, but JSON is not line-based data. And it can be all in one line, but it doesn't have to be. And also importantly, it's not all uh, regular. And we'll get to those that in, that in a set an example. Uh, so grep, sed, awk are great for things that are columnar data. So things that you would see in a, coming from a, uh, a flat file version of a spreadsheet or of a SQL database. Um, or a database such as Etsy Password. Um, there, as I say, they're great tools for line delineated uh, data, uh, but they're not great for rich data that, especially stuff that uses key value pairs and can be in, in uh, various orders. All right. So JSON is structured data. Uh, this is not the first tool that, that gives us structured data, the first format gives us structured data, but it is uh, a structured data for passing data from one service to another service. Um, it is not line delineated. So this is all one document that I'm showing here, the cat, uh, I'm catting out a file. Uh, in this particular case, I've got an array 
Uh, the opening and closing square brackets are still saying that this is an, array, an, an array. And inside the array, I have two documents. Those are the open and closing curly brackets. And inside each of those documents, I have two key value pairs. Uh, I have conference in both cases, it's Linux Fest Northwest. Welcome, your hands are soaking in it, right? Uh, and then the other two are the titles of my two talks that I'm giving today. The intro to JQ is the one we're in right now. Uh, and the Mastodon and Fediverse is the talk that I gave uh, last hour. I'm using where you, you've got commas to separate the different entries. Uh, I'm not going to cover that, but it is a structured data. And as you can see, it doesn't have to all be in one line. I could have had that all in one line, and it would still work, but I didn't have to. All right. Now, uh, the associative property we're familiar with in math, 2 plus 3 is, is exactly the same as 3 plus 2. And 2, 3, and 4, when multiplied in any order, all give you the same result. So 2 times 3 times 4, or 4 times 3 times 2, or even 3 times 4 times 2. Any order you want to put those in, they give you the same result. Not all parts of math do, but for, for addition and multiplication, uh, they, can, they can appear in any order and still be equivalent expressions. In JSON, we have the same thing. I call them the same document. I should probably call them equivalent documents, but... I've got three examples of the same document here. The first example uh, is, again, open and close curly brackets to say that I've got a document. And inside that document, I have two key value pairs. Uh, in the first example, the first key is conference. And again, the value of Linux Fest Northwest, or LFNW. And then the second key, or key value, the key is speaker and me. Right? In the second example, I've reversed the key value. So I've got speaker first and then conference. And in the third example, I've got, like I had in that very first example of JSON, I've got, I've got it broken up into multiple lines. As far as JSON is concerned, and as far as how we need to be able to parse JSON, those are all the same. They're equivalent. The documents are, all contain the same data. So when I go through and search, if I just want to get the values for speaker, I can't just grab the, the second end, you know, the, the, the value for the fir for the first key, I have to get find where the speaker key is and then get the value for that. And it might be on a, on a line all unto itself, right? So grep, set, and off don't do great with that type of thing. Can I make it work? Uh, uh, to some extent. <laughs> Painfully? Yes, yeah, maybe. Uh, but JQ gives us a way to do the things that we're used to in a similar-ish fashion, but based on understanding the, the document format. All right. So an example, I, the, the first example I have here is a grep where I set want to see just one thing. So I'm echoing out that document from the example document from the previous slide. Uh, and I am going to grep for uh, conference. I originally did conference instead of C dot plus E. Um, but I shortened it so it would fit on a line and just look better on the slide. Um, but I'm looking for the, the conference key, uh, and then I'm looking for the value. And I'm, I'm using, having to hit all the quotes. Uh, since we could have spaces, in fact, in this previous slide, there were spaces in here uh, as well. So I'd have to take the spaces into account and, and other things. So in order to do this in grep, it would actually be a lot more complex even than what we have, which is already you know, not straightforward, right? Uh, but I can go through and do it. Uh, and this gives me uh, the line uh, that, that was there. And then I can use a cut to go through and get just the value. So that doesn't give me the line. I take that back. I'm using the O option to say, just give me the data for the pattern that I match. So I match the key of conference and then the value that comes after it in only that part of the line. Um, and then I pipe that over to cut and I say, okay, cut, drop the key and give me just the value so I can get the value. And JQ, I don't know if you can tell, but it's a little simpler, right? <laughs> a little easier to read, simpler to see what's going on. I again take that same document, echo it over to JQ, then I say dot, look here, uh, look at, or look in the, in the documents and give me the value for conference, right? So dot conference saying just give me the value for conference, and lo and behold, there it is, right? Because JQ does all that funky parsing that we were that I had to do with grub, and allows me to just look at look look at it based on the the content name. You still need to know a little bit about the document structure. You can't just 
you know, at least with my experience, my capability, you can't just make something generic that works everywhere. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm working on specific data when I'm using JSON anyway. All right. The dot. So uh, the example, uh, uh, I'm going to explain what this does. I'm counting out a file. What the file actually looks like doesn't matter. It could have been one line, it could be multiple lines, so forth. Um, I'm counting that out, piping it into JQ, and then just saying dot. Just, you know, take this. And what dot does by default is pretty print it. And by pretty print, it means it's going to go through and separate your documents and your, your uh, arrays uh, and your key values, all the single lines, so you get a vertical representation of your document rather than squeezing, trying to squeeze it all into uh, a single one online. Uh, this is much easier for humans to read. It's fairly easy to see where your parts are, right? We, got the, we can see the array because we get the opening, closing, square brackets. We have the opening, closing, curly brackets for your documents. They're all lines by themselves, so it's easy to see, that, hey, we've got delineation here, and then each of the keys and values our key value pairs are on their own online as well. If there had been more arrays and documents, again, they would be separated out to, to uh, multiple lines. All right. So now I'm going to cut, cut that out. And this time instead of just dot, I'm saying dot, open square bracket, close square bracket. And what that's doing is saying strip the array. So the previous slide, we, we, had, we, uh, we opened and closed with uh, square brackets to say we had an array of documents. This time, we get two different documents. So the array is missing, the comma is missing. Right? So we get two different documents. Each of those documents in turn has two key values inside of them. I can also add an array by putting square brackets around the dots. Uh, in this case, we can see I've got two arrays. I have an outer array, again with the open closing square brackets, then I have an inner array. Uh, open closing square bracket. So I have an array that has a single element in it, which is another array, and that inner array has two elements, which are two documents. Now, let, let me I've given an example so you can kind of see what JSON looks like, but let me go ahead and go over what the, uh, the, the, the basics of the schema. So you have key value pairs. I've you know, given a couple of different examples of that. You have a label, colon, and a value. Um, Generally, for strings, you're going to need to add uh, double quotes on those. Uh, for numbers, you can leave them you can leave them open, uh, but for for most everything else, you need want double quotes on those. Uh, and uh, we can have multiple key value pairs within a, in an area separated by commas. It basically separate every uh, item by commas. Uh, and a, a document or an object um, is uh, uh, curly brackets, and then stuff in between. What's in between can be any of the, the items. And then array, an array is square brackets, and it's a list of items. So you have A, comma B, comma C, comma D. You've got different items within the array. Uh, and then a, a value inside of those can be any of the above. So a key value pair can have a label with an array or a document as the value, right? A document can contain multiple key value pairs. It can contain other documents. It can contain arrays. Right? Array can contain documents, so forth, right? So we can have uh, any mix and match anything with anything, uh, and uh, uh, there's probably some, some movie about that. I don't care. All right. An extended JSON example. Uh, I, I wanted to give you a more complex example. Uh, this is a single document. We've got opening, closing, uh, curly brackets. Inside that single document, the first item we have is a key value pair of conference with a Linux West Northwest. The next thing that we have is a key value pair, but that key, this key value pair is a key of time, and then the value is a document, and inside that document we have keys, keys and values for date and time, uh, the date and time of this particular uh, presentation. Hopefully I got this right. Uh, we close out our, our document, and then after that we have a key value pair that's got a, uh, uh, a key, and then the value is an array, and then the array is tags that we could have been using for this. And the, the examples are crappy tags. Don't, don't use those in real life, but, you know, it's the tags I chose are LFNW and the title of this, of this talk. Uh, and then a final key value pair, uh, speaker, and then uh, my name. All right. Uh, so if we want to do a value lookup within this, we got basically gone through this example when I did the, the first rep example. I'm counting out the... The, the JSON 
uh, document to JQ and then saying, show me the conference, and it gives us Linux Fest Northwest. So that's a, basically a repeat of the previous, uh, of the original example, but on a more complex uh, input. Now, uh, I'm gonna do similar type of thing. This time, instead of grabbing the conference, I'm grabbing the time uh, uh, document. Again, the time document is a key value pair. It's a key of time. And inside that key, uh, we have date and time key values. Um, brilliant of me to have the, the, outer, the, the, the outer document name time and also the key value name time. Uh, really, I should have done the document of like time date or something like that. But I want to do this to show that they're different things, right? That the, the time at the, uh, at the top level is a different object than the time of the key value pair, right? So I'm saying jq.time, show me the, the time element. It gives me the document that has the date and time key values in there. And then I, on the next example, I'm using uh, JQ to get the date out of that uh, that time document. And this kind, time, I'm catting the file to piping it to JQ, opens single quote, dot time, and that, that dot time says give me the time document, and then I'm piping to dot date, and then I close single quote, right? So we'll get to, the, to some things here in a second. But the first part is we have a pipe, right? We have a pipe operator in JQ that operates similar to what we would expect it to operate on the command line. It says take this, the, the, the output we got from the first part, and make that standard out the standard in for the next part of it. So I'm saying take the time uh, document, make that the standard out, and inside that, that time document, look for the date element. Um, we need to protect that with quotes so that the command line doesn't try to do it, right? Because otherwise we're going to take the time document and we're going to be piping it on the shell. The shell is going to look for the dot date command and probably get upset at us and say that doesn't exist because that's not a normal command for us that you could have one. Most of us won't, right? Uh, so we need those single quotes in order to, to protect that. Some of you might be screaming, Hans, why is it taking you this long to get this quote quoting, right? You're right. For all JQ queries, you should just quote it just to make sure you're, you're fine, right? Just like any time you put strings on the command line, you should at least put double quotes on them to make sure you're not accidentally doing something else, right? Um, w getting a URL that has a question mark in it does not give you the results that you want in general, right? So you should always throw, th throw quotes on. Uh, you should for JQ as well. Uh, I didn't do it for the first slides because I just wanted simpler examples, samples, right? But we should have them. And it is key that they are single quotes, not double quotes. JQ does not work, work, work with double quotes. You need single quotes. Uh, we'll, we'll get to it. I might be able to make it happen. It's just not worth it. Uh, if you need to be able to pass data from the command line uh, or the command line environment into JQ, I'll get to that later on. All right. Uh, and then we get the date elements uh, after all of that. Uh, all right. Oh, I, I, I put in a slide where I yell at myself about, about quotes, right? All right. Uh, key value pair. Uh, so I, what I was doing before was just giving us the value out of the key value pair. But what if I want the entire thing? Right? If I want the key and the value, it's command line. I can using echo and things. I can I can do that, right? But let's say I was getting a whole bunch of them. We'll get to that later on. Uh, I might want to keep those those in, uh, uh, references uh, intact. And so we can do that by saying uh, instead of saying dot and the and the uh, name of the key that we want to get. I can say, here's a document, and in that document, I want the, the conference key value, or the, you know, name the key for the key value pair that you want. And it gives me back a document that has then that key value pair. And again, if I'd have chosen the, uh, the time uh, key for the key value pair, I would get a key, and then as the value, I would get a sub-document that has the date and time. I just chose the simpler example here. All right. Uh, oh. And then I chose the complex example. The next slide. Right? I should I should uh, pay attention when I'm doing. All right. Uh, we got that. Uh, we get two documents. All right. Now for the time date, uh, instead of uh, what I'd done before, where I took the time uh, document uh, and piped it and said, "Give me the date," I can just do it at once. I can say, "Okay, here's the time document dot time," and then within that, I want the dot date field out of that, and it'll go through and just give me the the uh, date field. Uh, but both work. All right. Uh, if we want 
raw data. I have the wrong example here. Um, uh, okay, the second example. All right, uh, the dash uh, dash dash raw dash value or dash r option uh, says to uh, so it's a right. It's giving the right example, but I uh, have the wrong command line in here. Uh, so imagine that there was a dash r uh, between the jq and the dot speaker. Uh, it's checking out the, the quotes for me, right? Can I do that on the command line? Sure, tr and, and, and d uh, double quotes, right? And, you know, with a backslash in front of it, so single character quote in front of the double quote. But yeah, that's fairly easy to do. But I can again do it uh, on the uh, with from JQ itself. Uh, it has several different uh, command line tools for different outputs, different styles output. Uh, I'm only going to cover a couple in this presentation, uh, but go look at the top of the man page where it covers those. All right, multi grep. Uh, not the multi-pass, multi-grep, if I want to grep for multiple items. So similar to, to what I was doing before where I said, give me a document. Um, and uh, in this kind of case, I'm giving it a list of the uh, keys that I want to extract. Uh, so I'm giving com conference comma time and say, give me the uh, both the conference va or key value pair and the time key value pair out of that document. And if we had multiple documents, I would get multiple entries, uh, but those don't fit on slides very well. You know, give you, give you the results from a 6,000 line uh, file uh, on a slide and try to be able to read it. No, that doesn't do it. So I, I try to go for simpler examples. Uh, we can go through and, and look at arrays. So this example, I've got an array again. And I'll open and close the square brackets inside that array. I have two different documents. Again, these are for my talks. Um, I've got a little bit more content in there this time. Uh, if you notice for the, uh, the second entry, the, the JQ, I've added a tape, uh, date field. Uh, and we've, so both of them have uh, conference, speaker, and topic. And then the second one has a date field as well. Uh, so I can cat out that file pipe to JQ. And if I'm looking for just the topic out of those, I can, I can pass it to dot... Uh, uh, open closed uh, array, so I can say D array this, so just look at the documents, and within each of those documents I can extract the topic. Uh, I can also go through and select based on a specific uh, match. So again, I'm D arraying the entries, the same, same example file as before. I'm uh, going to go through and D array that, pipe that to a function called select, uh, and select is open and closing uh, um, uh, round brackets, or also known as parentheses, um, as opening closing parentheses uh, to, to denote as a function. And within that function, I'm saying, give me the topic, dot topic. And I want one that is equal, equal, that is that it has the value of, and in this case, Mastodon on the Fediverse, colon, decentralized social networking and services, the full, full length of my title. Uh, and it's giving me the entire uh, document, right? So I'm selecting that document, I'm not just selecting that field. I'm selecting that the document that has that topic, and I get all three entries. Again, notice that we're getting pretty printed out output with each key value on a different line. Uh, I can then select uh, just like I did before. This time I'm comp, so this will this the select is saying basically select both con both documents because they're both presentations today. Um, but then I'm piping that and saying uh, on the the document. Give me just the speaker and topic. So now my output, again, pretty printed, is two different documents, open and closing screening brackets for, per document. And within each of those documents, I have both the speaker and the topic uh, key value pairs. All right. When you get to more really complex examples, I need to change this. It's way too much text on the on a side slide. I apologize for that. But I wanted to show that we can do an OR. So I'm doing a select again, and I'm saying, give me a topic. And one is the topic of the first presentation. And then I say, or give me a topic, and I'm giving it, again, the second presentation. And it's giving me uh, all of the, both of the documents as the output. Uh, and I really need to work on a better example for this slide. Uh, but you can use logic within your selects and, uh, and other functions. All right. Now, I talked about being able to pass data in from the command line. Uh, this is the way we can do that. So if you use dash dash arg as your command line argument for JQ, so JQ dash dash arg, and then what you give after that as text, 
will then become uh, the key, uh, or the variable name, excuse me, not the key, the variable name inside uh, JQ, and then the value after that would be the value that is assigned to the variable. So now I'm saying topic, and I'm giving it the enter to JQ, the title for this particular talk. And then I'm, I'm again, I'm, I'm dot uh, uh, square bracketing, so deep, deer uh, uh, arraying the, uh, the content. I'm piping that to a select, and I'm looking for dot topic. I'm looking for a topic. And this time, equal equals, instead of being the actual text for my topic, it's dollar topic, right? I'm using the variable topic, which will be, get expanded to the value that was given to it on the command line, and then piping that just show the, the speaker of the topic. You can give mul create multiple variables for use within JQ by using the dash dash arg uh, argument multiple times. So if you've got five variables you want to use, you, you, you have five dash dash args. The first item is the variable name. The second is the value that will be assigned to that variable within JQ. Uh, we can go through and remove a key. And this is using the del function, del for delete. Again, we have open and closing uh, uh, parentheses. And then I give it the, uh, the, the name of the key that I want to go through and delete. This is passing through everything else. So that, this is a grep-v kind of thing, right? So I'm just passing through everything else except for the speaker. So we see, see that we end up with two documents, just like on the input, but my name is, is missing for both of those because just ignore me. It's fine. All right. Uh, I want to give a couple of real world examples where somebody else creates JSON instead of just random things that Hans they not, made up uh, to self promote his talks uh, at, if, at different conferences. Um, so the first one is if you uh, look in uh, your Mozilla profiles uh, and Rand string is, is a good random string that Mozilla will, will, will pull up for you. Um, but if you have a, uh, if you look at in, the, in your profile, there's an add-ons.json file uh, that has information about the add-ons that you've got it in, in, uh, in installed on your uh, uh, Firefox uh, instance. Uh, and you can pipe that JSON file, it's JSON, or you can pipe it over to JQ. Uh, in this case, I'm using the dash C option. I've mentioned I'm going to talk about a couple of different options. The dash C says use the compact. So instead of pretty printing it, because this would not fit on a slide in, in pretty print format, Instead of pre-printing it, it's going to put it all on uh, each document on its own line. Uh, and then so I'm saying, in that add-ons.json document, uh, show me the add-ons array, dot add-ons, and the, uh, the array. So I'm going to go through and, and deray that. And in, that, uh, in the documents that, that come from that, I want the name and the version. And so we can see the output here. Uh, the name and the version of each of the documents or the, each of the, the uh, uh, add-ons I've got in there. If you have questions about any of those add-ons outside of this talk, please let me know. Uh, I've gotten a couple of different talks. I do, I've done talks on U-Matrix and some of the other things uh, over time. Uh, I, uh, for, for a privacy perspective, I really do highly uh, recommend the Firefox multi containers uh, and keep things isolated. All right. Uh, then here's an example for Nextcloud. Uh, now this one gets a little bit complex at the beginning. I've got a couple of uh, uh, variables that I assign. The only reason I did that it was just to, to, to make, make it to where I have a function so that it's easier to grab the, the JSON. So the, the first part of the, the first example in here is really just the setup that says, go query the, uh, the, the API for my uh, uh, Next cloud install that's on example.com because that's where everybody installs their services, right? Um, we go query my next cloud instance and here's the authentication information, everything I need to do the, the API stuff for it. And then put that inside of an alias so I can just call the alias as a, as a command and that will spit out JSON for me. So the second part of this, the slide, the example there is saying spit out some JSON for me, please. And then I throw that to J JQ, pipe it to JQ. And in JQ, I say, give me the cards. So I've got an array of cards. I want to get, get that. Give them to me as, as documents. And inside those documents, I want the title and the description uh, key value pairs. Uh, so I get back the title for the first one is example task three. Description is LNFW example with multiple lines. So in, in the case of Nextcloud, it, it gives you 
you can have multi multi line uh, in the inside your JSON. And those get get converted to backslash ends for us, uh, so that they they show up in in, in JSON as normal text. Uh, and then, of course, the very important uh, task of do the things, do them, do them. All right. Uh, a JSON web token example for those of you that have to deal with these. Uh, so the first one is just showing that I've got a variable, and to that variable I assigned this random string, or not random string, but the string of gibberish. And um, uh, then I go through and ex uh, show that this string of gibberish is a JSON web token, what the content of that JSON web token is, and that I can take the uh, content that came from that and shove it back into Base64 to get back to the the uh, JSON, uh, uh, you know, the, the JSON web token again. So I'm just showing it goes both directions to, to prove that the content is exactly the random irrelevant stuff that I put into the, into the token. Um, and then the second example, I'm echoing out that that token with the random gibberish, which is what you would get from a JSON uh, a web token. I'm piping that to base64 and then D for, for uh, decoding it to turn it back into the JSON. So I'm taking the web token, uh, uh, base64, random, uh, not random, but gibberish, turning that back into a JSON document with plain text, and then I'm piping that to JQ and saying, give me the account uh, admin. So if you can figure out where this token is in use, you can use it to get admin access to this non-existent service. All right. Uh, case insensitive matching. So this is really important for grep, right? We, we uh, if I'm grepping for something, it, I don't want it to not get it because the, it was just multi-case or camel case or whatever else. I was looking for lower case and it was upper case and so forth. Uh, so this is an example. I've got a, uh, going back to my document of self-promotion and uh, I'm going to pipe that into JQ deray it and I say okay inside the each of the documents I want the topic in the speaker uh, in my curly brackets pipe that over to select again and this time I'm going to select based on speaker but I'm selecting the speaker and piping that to the test function and then the test function is looking for the string I gave it which is my name or, or well Hans and all, all, all uppercase uh, which does not appear anywhere you notice I always write it with lowercase um, doesn't appear in uppercase characters anywhere in there, uh, but that I'm saying, uh, uh, giving the flag of I for uh, uh, insensitive, uh, so it's looking for uh, Hans in any form of uh, case, and I get back both the documents because both of them have my name in there, because uh, what's self-promotion if you're not going to do everything, right? All right. Um, <clears throat> then the regex uh, matching, um, again using that same document, this time when I type, when I pipe the topic and speaker into select, uh, I'm grabbing for topic, and then I'm piping that to uh, test again, and this time I'm giving it a regular expression. Now the regular expression is just uh, anchors with the full text, so uh, colon, uh, insert a JQ, grab for JSON, and then uh, uh, dollar sign, so the, uh, not colon, to me, caret, so the caret says the beginning of the line, and then the full full text of the line, and then the other side says the end of the line. So I'm looking for exactly this content. Uh, again, I'm using I for case insensitive, sensitive matching. Don't need to because this this was an exact match. I could use regular uh, 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 regular expression in here, um, but my examples are using ASCII doc, and I do a bunch of ASCII doc stuff on the back end to, to make this happen. Uh, and I just haven't gone through and. and uh, abstracted that portion of my slide. So it's actually an ASCII doc limitation uh, or my use of ASCII doc limitation uh, that's that's causing that. Uh, but I have a second example where I, I, I do magic on the back end to, to make it work more, more uh, work better. So in this case, I'm again taking that same document, uh, piping it, you know, and in the end it gets piped to, to select. I'm grabbing, looking for the uh, looking at the topics, um, actually this points out something I forgot to mention earlier, I'll get to that. Um, so I'm looking at the topics, and I'm piping those to test again. Um, and this time I'm giving an actual regular expression, and I'm saying look for either capital S or capital N at the end of the line, because the dollar sign says, you know, anchored to the, to the end. Uh, but I'm doing case insensitive, so I'm really looking for any case of S or any case of N as the last character in the field. 
I get both of my documents back because one ends in S and one and ends in N. Somebody was talking to the writer in this presentation to make sure it worked out for me. Thank you. Um, and uh, uh, I'm getting both of those, but I'm using a regular expression in this particular case in order to do that. We can get more complex with regular expressions. That is the value of regular expressions. We can add, always add more complexity. Uh, I love them, but yes, we can do, we can do lots of fun with them. Something I had forgot to point out earlier, though, when I'm doing these selects, like, piping into the select for the topic, notice that I'm doing a select on the document. So I'm saying, look at the topic. And that's the only thing that we're looking at for the regular expression match. But I'm passing the entire document all the way through, right? So yeah, it, just like with a grep, when I grepped for the line that, you know, that had nobody in that field, I got the entire line, unless I tell it otherwise. Well, in that case, I did, because I used the... Uh, no, I didn't. And then that one, you got the whole line, right? that example. So I'm, when I when I pipe the topic speaker to select, even though I'm only matching on topic, in the end, I'm still passing through that entire document. But I'm using select to only select on one field within that document. Uh, so this would be more actually similar to like an awk, where I say match uh, field two to have this value, but then we get the entire line. And then I, I got to the end, uh, was was really tr rushing to make sure it didn't run out of time again. Do we have any questions from the audience? Uh, any any particular slides that you'd like to me to bring up again so you can study them? Uh, one. Yeah. Um, how do you uh, put it back in the same format? How do you sort of re-array it? Uh, so you see your, your original document is an array of documents. And the final one is uh, basically a repeat of documents with no array. How, how do you make that an array? Yeah, so you could, um, I th with JQ, I think you can put a bunch of this stuff within the array and, and, and put it back in. Uh, I take the array out just because it simplifies the, uh, the presentation. Uh, and honestly, I'd have to think about it. And... And, uh, and then that type of thing, because it's, it's just text, if I have to think more than three minutes, I end up using... Throw, throw square brackets back on top of it. Um, but I think we can do this within the, the brackets of the, uh, of the item to begin with. Um, it, it just uh, um, complicates the, the, the presentation, or the, yeah, the presentation for me. All right, I, I've got a more sort of real world one as well. If you go back to the slide with, um, um, what was it, the Firefox things, the Firefox add-ons? Yeah, I right hear. So imagine we wanted to generate a new add-ons file, and that, I, I don't know what the format is, but perhaps it's got some other field than just dot add-ons. And uh -huh. we filter a list of the add-ons, which you know, you've shown us how to do that, right? We're just going to select. But say we want the whole original document and all its other fields, how would you structure the, the query in JSON so that you would get all of the original rest of the stuff, you don't care about that, but um, say you only wanted, um, I don't know, what's, what's got more than one in it? Uh, yeah. Something with Firefox in it, or Fox, right? In, yeah. In your add-ons list, how would you do that? Did I make the question sort of clear enough? Yeah, I think so. Basically, if you got these add ons, and let's say that you want, I've got uh, two language packs. I don't know why I have the South African language pack, other than I probably ran this on an Ubuntu box, right? But let's say you wanted to add the 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 uh, uh, the French language pack or the Klingon. I don't know if there's a Klingon one, but let's say you do, right? Um, how would you add, you know, build that document and add it into the the actual, you know, the actual document? Uh, so one of the things is you come come back and watch versions two and three of my uh, of my uh, Trinity because I, I cover that in there somewhere. <laughs> um, but basically, I had the delete function earlier. There's an add function, um, so you can add something back in. Um, that's no add is not the right one. Add concatenates, uh, but there's a similar function for that um, uh, to be able to go through and, and add it. Um, what you could be doing with uh, JQ is figuring out what all the fields are that you need and then using the dash dash args 
to build the content within JQ as, as variables, just to, to simplify the whole thing for you if you want to do this with a wrapper. Um, and then uh, you can uh, add a document within the array. Uh, but I don't know, I don't remember what the, uh, the function is off the top of my head. Okay, that's, that's um, an interesting thing, but a different one that I was asking about. Oh. What I was trying to get at is that uh, uh, addons.json might be a complex document and has more than the addons field, and you wanted to filter the addons field, right? So we, you've shown us how to do that, and uh -huh. just pipe and do a select, and, and you know, we could filter out, say, on the name of an add-on, and get you know a filtered list, but say uh -huh. the original document with that filtered list of add-ons in it, how would you get the original fields plus the filtered list of the add-ons field? Could you select on a wildcard once it's been filtered? That close? Well, I, I tell you why I asked this. Um, yeah. I know how to do the filtering. What I don't know how to do is is to sort of combine it with the original. I mean, is it, is it just that I'm not filtering on the right thing and I should filter? Um, so, so um, okay, are you, you're filtering, and so, so are you saying you're filtering to get certain key values out of the documents and you want to change those and then merge them back into the full document. So let's say that, that, that we can leave the complexity of this out, right? And just say we have uh, uh, a doc, you know, an array of documents, and each of the documents has A, B, C, and D keys, and you want to change the values of B and C on some of the uh, documents, and then but rebuild the entire the original list with just the B and C values changed on some of the documents. That's a good, a good alternative. Yeah, it's, it's like, how do you manipulate inside the document and leave all the rest of it in place, right? So okay. keep in the structure, how do you manipulate that, but leave all of the rest of the fields that you had in the first place such that it's still a valid document? Yeah. Um, I, so for something like that, I think what you can do is what I'm doing here with this uh, select. And I do that. So the select would give me the give you the things that you're wanting to change. So you might end up needing to just off the top of my head, basically pipe twice. And actually, you can do that. Um, uh, I'll bring up the comma operator in a second. Um, but you might want to basically select the the ones that you want to change and change those in line, and then select the ones that you don't want to change, and then merge it back together. It's JSON, so the order shouldn't matter, other than for humans it might mat matter or something like that, right? Um, but if you if you needed to get back in the uh, in the in the same order, that might take a little bit of extra effort. Um, but you can end up with two pipelines, right? One that has the stuff you're not changing, one that has the stuff you are changing, gets the changes, and then they merge back together. Um, the uh, and and for my own sanity, I might do that as two different commands myself uh, so that I know things aren't getting changed, right? I like, I like my read operations and my write operations to, to isolate. Um, but uh, the comma operator is, is actually um, a T. So what's really happening on this particular match where I'm saying give me the topic and the speaker is it's taking that entire list of documents and piping that to top uh, topic filter, and then it's taking that entire list of documents and also piping it to the speaker filter. So the topic and speaker filters both see the same input. So what you might be able to do is use a combo operator to have one select give you the, the read-only documents that you're not changing, another select to give you the, the documents that you are changing, and on that line, make the changes. Um, uh, I am not going to do that on, on, the, on the fly uh, <laughs> during this presentation, um, but, but I'm going to think about that. That's, that sounds like fun. Well, so, okay. First speaker there, you could say put another filter directly after that inside the brace. Is that, is that how you go about it? Yeah, that's what I'd have to play with how I, how that would work. 
I, uh, I believe because you can put complex things in there, right? So what I might have to do is do the topic speaker like I have here. To, well, you're not, you're, not select, you're not selecting just the topic speaker. You're passing the entire document. So let's leave that part out. So I take the array, I de-array it, so I get a bunch of documents, and then I pipe that to the select. But I can have a, a select and do all the stuff that the select does in that entire uh, stuff, and then a comma and the other select. And then the pipe. Oh. Yeah. I, which I have not thought about before, but I'm like, mm -hmm. playtime. I'm going to think about this. <laughs> um, well, first, I have a comment just to say that ChatGPT is actually pretty cool, uh, uh, pretty useful when it comes to uh, using JQ and creating like those things where so you can ask what you want to do, but you be expected to output the input. And sometimes it doesn't work so well, but it always gives you like insight into what you, um, in the direction it's going, right? Um, also, I had a question about the, how you would, uh, or if there is a way to do um, operations on the uh, key value pairs using something like awk inside the JQ command. So if I wanted to like edit the, the text of every single topic, um, yeah. like a select, could I, um, uh, for instance, um, like make everything all caps or uh, fancy like uh, operations of off in it, and then get that. Yeah, you, you can you can do a lot of that in JQ itself. You can go through and, and capitalize lowercase and so forth. There are, there are plenty of functions. I believe you can make system calls within your JQ pipeline. Um, I have really avoided that as much as as much as I love the 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 idea of it just for fun. Um, but it seems to me you, you're just introducing so much complexity to getting everything to work right, right? Um, uh, but I think you can do that. Uh, the other thing, of course, you could do is you can just pipe out of JQ into awk and then back into JQ, um, which is what I would probably do uh, because I'm not, by throwing awk or grep or sed into the middle of the, of the JQ stuff, now for uh, uh, quoting, it's just going to be a, a nightmare of, of trying to understand where you are, uh, you know, what level of quoting you're at to what does this dollar sign mean at this point in time, right? Because you don't know, you're looking at it in, in a shell perspective, an off perspective, a JQ perspective, right? Um, uh, that would that would get uh, uh, complex just to know where you are. Then again, if you can do that, you're really good at understanding, you know, <laughs> how to break this thing down. So, and by the way, for the for the previous question about uh, uh, the pipeline and stuff like that, if you figure that out, please message me and let me know. Give me feedback. All right. And and if I still didn't answer your question right, contact me about that as well. Right. I I, I won't guarantee I can solve your 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 questions, but I can try. Oh, and I have another question. So uh -huh. let's. So you have that list there with um, you have the conference speaker topic and all those things. So what if I wanted to take the topic, the key uh, value pair, and I wanted to say, hey, I don't like the topic uh, like format. What if I wanted to do title, subtitle, and delimitate, delimitate between um, Mastodon and the Fediverse and uh, by that colon and decentralized yeah. resources? Could, I, uh, could uh, JQ get that into a title, Mastodon, and uh, subtitle, decentralized? Yeah, so I can go through and, um, uh, oh, I, I left, when I rebuilt this, I left out one of my slides. Let me come back here. Uh, so one of the examples I normally have uh, that I just realized is missing is uh, back to here. Um, where I select conference and I change, uh, so I usually do uh, um, uh, uh, in here, do, 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 uh, an example I've got, I have topic as the key and I change it to title. Uh, so there's a way of doing that. So I can, I can change the key, the, the, the key that the value is assigned to in JSON 
Um, and I could then then say take not only change the you know add a new key, but then I could take a subset of a uh, of a value and add it to that key. So if you wanted to break that out, I could say give me the part before the colon and add that to title, and give me the part after the colon and add that to subtype. Uh, including if it was originally called title, I can override what's in the title value. Because in the end, it's plain text, right? So all I'm doing is manipulating the plain text uh, and uh, and moving from there. If I'm working with a large file, I don't know the structure for, is there um, ways that you can output just the, the like table of contents or, or structure of the, the JSON with the keys before you start querying into it? Uh, there are ways where I can just show the keys. Um, what you would end up with, though, is just remember that, that uh, JSON doesn't require keys to be present. So the example I gave earlier where uh, one, uh, one document had the, uh, the, the date field and the other one didn't. Uh, JSON is great at sparse data. Um, so if you think of it, uh, so my primary job is working on MongoDB, a uh, document-based uh, database. And um, if you think about SQL versus uh, the no SQL MongoDB type of scenario, in SQL, in my SQL, I've got columns. And so if I want to describe cars, I have you know a serial number to tell me which record I'm looking at. Then I have a name for the car. I have a color for the car. I have a thing for how many windows it has, how many tires it has, and whatever other things that you might have for a car, right? Um, but, uh, and I might like if it has, if, if I'm presuming that I've got, I'm going to have four tires in my car, I might have an entry for every tire so I can know if I've got, you know, what, what brand of tire or what size of tire I've got on. Why you would have a car with different size tires, all oh, front and back maybe, right? But um, in MongoDB, I'd be like, oh, you've got a car with three tires. All right, I just leave the fourth tire out. It's not even in there. It's not taking up space, right? But each tire is labeled which tire, first tire, second tire, third tire, right? Um, and I can change those. I can say uh, front tire versus left rear and right rear, right? But normally you might have front left and front right. Well, if you've got a three-wheel vehicle, you just have a front tire or just a back tire because you don't have left and right. You just get one in the middle, right? And if I've got a system with dualies, now I've got six tires. I can have front left and front right. And I can have left, right, uh, outer, and left, right, inner, uh, right, right, out, outer, and right, 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 inner, and however you want to go through and do those. And so each of those documents would have different fields. Um, so how would I do that? Uh, what you'd want to do is something that does fold. Can you fold all the documents together? Schema generation. Yeah, yeah. So you, what you want to do is is say every you know. You've got your tires document, right? So I would, instead of doing, you know, one entry per tire or whatever, I'd have the tires document that would have all the information about tires. And so I wanted to create a, 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 uh, a tires document that has all the keys that were in tires and then uniques on the keys. Um, and I think you could do that, but I have not tried I, actually, I shouldn't have, should say I haven't tried that in JSON. I am certain I have done that with set, and, or you know, grab set and <laughs> uh, And then, and then also with working with large files, is there like a sample uh, thing where you can go give me a random you know, element at this level uh, or ten, fifty out of this large? Uh, so. Yeah. So you're wanting to do? Let's uh, go here. So right, I'm, I'm saying look in the in the time. Uh, key value pair that has a document and looking for the date field in there. And you're saying, I want to go three layers deep into documents and look for the X field there, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, they, they've got like yeah. millions of records in there. Just give me 50, but random sample them so I can kind of get a sense. Of ah, that. I see what you're saying. Give me a random 50. Actually, I don't, I think it's got a random uh, uh, function. Um, uh, I don't know off the top of my head, uh, or if I would just say grab them all and then throw them into command line tools. Um, I have, uh, as long as it, it doesn't you know max me out on resources, I'd probably do that in the command line myself. Uh, but I think it's got a random function. You might be able to do that. I don't uh, I don't remember for certain. 
So uh, the JQ man page is a wealth of resources. Uh, it is not sufficient. Uh, there are some online JQ uh, sites as well. I haven't found anything that is really good documentation for JQ. Uh, that's part of the mystery. Um, it is, uh, it has, the man page has great examples for specific types of tasks. Uh, but I'm a system man. I do things, I do weird things. Uh, so most of the time I go looking at it, it doesn't really have things that align to what I do. Uh, uh, as a community, we need to work on better documentation. I'm part of the problem. I haven't, other than my presentations, I haven't like written documentation. So, well, thank right. you. Uh, I'm going to stop the recording. We can continue. Okay.